Hi there, welcome to ProTech. Today, we're gonna to share a video from Mario at Super Mario Diagnostics on how to perform an advanced head gasket diagnosis with no disassembly required. Let's see how he does it. Hey there viewers, thank you for tuning in to Super Mario Diagnostics once again. Today we have an 09 Lexus RX 350. It's already been diagnosed. I just wanted to do a quick rundown as to an advanced head gasket diagnosis with absolutely no disassembly required. Um, <clears throat> this is a two bank engine, it's a V6. Uh, and I've already diagnosed uh, the rear head gasket leaking. And I wanna show you how. First thing I did was go to the car and confirm the customer's concern of a crank nose start. She mentioned overheating <clears throat> and it was low on coolant. And I cranked it enough, got it, was able to get it started and brought it into the, to the bay, but it didn't sound great during cranking. So here we go with another RC test. Um, <clears throat> a failed RC test that's not mechanical. And this, I hope you guys understand, and there was somebody that made a comment that said oh it's technically it's mechanical because it's like mechanical as in metal you know you don't have to replace any parts but this in this case you do uh head gaskets no good on this one that's probably just a symptom we, we're gonna have to dig deeper but that's not the point of this video the point of this video is to show how to do an rc test to get to a uh, head gasket failure so when i saw a failed rc test let me just um set this up here I had seen this right see that low compression there we are synced to number two right here number two coil I've got my amp clamp over here on the negative I'm sorry on the positive side and my injector fuse is pulled right there and the jumper just in case and um, this is a pressure pulse sensor this one I'm trying out is from uh, Cody from Cody's auto diagnostics thanks bro um, <clears throat> He sent me this one, it works great. I also have a Michael Nicholson sensor. I use them interchangeably, I love them both. Um, but this one I just decided to, uh, you know, basically pick his sensor and works great. But before I show you the pressure pulse sensor that I got from the radiator, um, you do not want, by the way, you do not want coolant getting to this pressure pulse uh, sensor. This is what I saw, number two. Firing order is one, two, three, four, five, six, as you can see right there, and it's one, three, five in the back, two, four, six in the front, and as you can see, number two, good, three, no good, four, five, six, one, and then back to two, and um, considering the overheating, I wanted to do a pressure pulse, so this is the pressure pulse right here positive force upwards negative force downwards it's pretty obvious that every time there's low compression that compression is going somewhere else and since this pressure pulse is at the radiator uh, filler neck that's where it's pretty obvious that it's going so we have a head gasket failure without having to do any disassembly i don't rely necessarily on block checks uh, those that blue liquid you know turns yellow turns green whatever color it wants to turn if there's um <clears throat> hydrocarbons but <clears throat> this is a this is new school this is making use of a scope in switch situations where we normally wouldn't have in the past and i hope all of you can benefit from this because i sure have i you know as you can see all i did it, it's a little messy it's a bunch of wires but it sure beats taking off that plenum and doing a, a leak down test to find out that it's something going on in the radiator and I didn't have to pressure test the radiator to check to see if there's a fluid or stick a bore scope down that cylinder to find a head gasket leak so with that I leave you and I hope you enjoyed this video hope you can see the the, the pros to this and and see the advantages that you can have by using a scope I know my channel is very scope based I don't want you guys thinking that that's the first thing I always go for no matter what you know always go through your basics but you know when the time comes for the scope to come out go all the way with it use all the tools you got
uh, amp clamps, pressure pulse sensors, uh, everything you got. Um, <clears throat> and use it logically, you know, put triggers, set your triggers. If you, if you have uh, any concerns or any areas in which you would like for me to expand on, on how to set up, let me know. Drop it in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching and until next time, take care.